Greetings students. I hope you enjoyed your break between semesters, but now it's time to get back to work. So the subject for this uh, class is going to be the Estabrook dollar pen. This is a inexpensive fountain pen made by Estabrook between 1934 and approximately 1942. It's referred to as the dollar pen because it cost one dollar. Um, Although, don't let the cost fool you. This is an excellent, excellent pen and ranks among my favorites um, uh, among, among the Estabrook pens. Uh, unlike uh, most of the later models, the clip on this pen is a very, very thin stainless steel. It is quite functional and quite springy, but the steel itself is quite thin and it has a thin cap band. As we will see in later semesters, Estabrook uh, made a much wider uh, cap band uh, later on. Uh, the clip wraps around and becomes the finial on the top of the cap where it has Estabrook imprinted on the top. Um, the pen itself has R. Estabrook and Company made in USA imprinted on the body of the pen and it is black plastic. But not just black plastic, because like most Estabrook pens, this came in multiple colors there. So these are often referred to as the classic six Estabrook colors. I'm gonna do a, a, a video just outlining the different colors that all the Estabrooks came in, but you basically have a red, a green, the green, there are multiple unofficial variants of the green, much like the gray, multiple unofficial variants of the gray, blue as well, and a copper or a brown color in addition to the, to the basic black pen. Um, it is a screw to uncap pen, and it takes less than one turn to unscrew, and we see that, um, we have uh, a fairly small section with a little bit of flare on the end. Of course, the pen does post, and you probably do want to post this pen. It's a very light pen, only weighs 13 grams. This is clearly a fairly small pen. Here you see it compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. So this is definitely on the smaller side, uh, particularly by modern pen standards. Like all Estabrook pens, it features the Estabrook removable nib unit, which simply unscrews and you can replace the nibs. This particular nib is a 2668 nib, which simply says Estabrook, the model number, and made in USA. The 2668 was classified by Estabrook as a firm medium general writing nib. We'll see uh, um, in later uh, episodes how Estabrooks got very, very specific in many cases about what they, the uses for their various nibs were. Um, and you can see in this particular nib, it has sort of this flat feed as opposed to a more rounded, fuller feed that is indicative of an earlier nib that is um, um, aligned with the period when this um, particular dollar pen would have been made. Um, the pen, like all the pens we're going to be covering in this series, features a um, lever filler filling mechanism. For those unfamiliar with a lever fill mechanism, what happens is there's a rubber sack inside the pen and a metal bar that runs the length of inside the barrel. When you pull this lever down, it, com it moves the leather bar, the, le the metal bar downward, compressing the sack. When you flip the lever back, it allows the sack to uncompress. That is how the pen fills. These uh, um, lever fillers with a rubber sack inside uh, typically don't hold a lot of ink uh, by most modern pen standards, but you have to understand the era in which these pens were made. Everybody just kept a bottle of ink on their desk at all times, and pretty much everywhere you went, 
uh, there was bottles of ink around. So it was a slightly different kind of world that these these pens um, uh, evolved in. One thing that should also be noted that in addition to these colors, it also came in what is often referred to as a dollar fifty variant, which uh, was a more expensive pen, fully fifty percent more if you do the math. Um, that came in a marbled plastic um, variety. Uh, those pens are quite quite rare today and quite quite expensive. Um, so rare and so expensive, in fact, that I do not actually. Uh, have one to show you. Of course, you're going to want to see this pen right, uh, aren't you? Well, you're going to get your wish right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing with here is an Esther book. Model, uh, sorry, Esther book uh, dollar pen. And as we said, this is from uh, approximately 1934 to 1942. And this is a, a Model 2668 uh, nib. And um, this is for, as Esther Brooke described, um, a firm, medium, general writing. And um, these nibs write great. So these are all uh, steel nibs. Um, and the nice thing about these Esterbrook steel nibs is they're very, very, very easy to smooth out yourself if you feel they're scratchy or not smooth enough, etc. I've done that on many, many nibs. I actually don't uh, remember if I did it on this particular nib that I'm using here today, but um, again, I um, uh, I really like the way these nibs write, and like I said, if you're inclined to even do the most uh, trivial uh, on your own nib work, they are really really good uh, good pens to try try uh, try doing it uh, with. Um, so. Um, Oh, one thing to point out, um, um, they call this a firm medium, but if you notice, it does have some uh, line variation and almost has a little bit of a stub-like qualities. Uh, in all honesty, um, if you were to buy one of these nibs, it probably would not write exactly like this one does here. What happens with these steel nibs is they get a certain amount of wear on them over the decades and decades that they were used, and they all start to sort of deviate quite a bit from um, the original um, uh, way they were made. So unless you get a new one in the box, which, by the way, is easily obtainable, um, there's, there's huge amounts of new old stock Esterbrook nibs uh, floating around. But unless you get one of those, don't necessarily expect it that it's going to write um, exactly as described. That's part of the charm, if you will, of some of these um, Esterbrook, um, Esterbrook uh, uh, nibs. Um, uh, you never, if you, unless you're getting a new old stock nib, you never quite know exactly what you're going to, um, to get. Um, so that's actually about it for this particular pen. Let's talk about this ink a little bit now, shall we? Okay, this ink is Pelican. Blue black. Um, so I really, really like this uh, blue black ink. It's definitely a bluer blue black than some uh, blue blacks which definitely lean towards the blacker side but it is definitely a blue um, a blue black uh, ink one thing that's a little bit unfortunate is that I don't believe that this is actually retailed officially by Pelican in the US so if you're in the US you may actually have to go to a European retailer to get this particular color. But it's not super, super difficult, but I'm not quite sure it's sort of officially part of their US product line. But it is a it is a really nice ink. I like it quite a bit, and I do trust it in my vintage uh, pens. And I, I think it kind of has a nice kind of vintage uh, 
almost period correct look to it. That's kind of uh, one of the things, one of the things I like about it. And as you can imagine, um, quite well behaved. Uh, doesn't bleed through the paper. Doesn't smear, etc. So typical, um, uh, typical, typical uh, uh, nice ink that you would expect uh, from uh, from Pelican. Well, I think that might do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. There will definitely be more of these Estherbrook University episodes as we work through Estherbrook's product line. If you like this video, please, please subscribe. Leave a comment. Give us a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Until next time, have a good day. Bye-bye.